Hi, this is Samuel with the Physics Focus. Last week I ran through two slit interference for waves, and this time I am going to have a look at single slit diffraction. Very similar, but uh, a few important differences. Now, this topic isn't covered by all of the A-level syllabuses. So in a sense you may not need to know this, at least for the exam. But this is a phenomenon that comes up in all sorts of different areas and it's really interesting. And besides, quite frankly, I don't think you can call yourself a physicist if you don't understand this. So, here we have a similar setup as before, a light source. Now I'm going to be talking mostly about light, but this applies to any type of waves. Light source, monochromatic, so a laser is a good light source here, shining onto a single slit or single cap here, width B. Now once again, this blue line is simply a reference line pointing straight ahead. And we're going to start off by looking at rays travelling parallel to that blue line, these red lines here. Now the way that this works is, if you have the light falling on this slit here, coming through it, we can treat this, the width of this slit, as if it's a whole series of lots of tiny little light sources, all emitting light waves in phase, assuming that the radiation falls on it in phase. So, if we're looking in this direction straight ahead, all of the light, all the way across the slit here, will arrive at the end here, at the same point, and it will all have travelled the same distance. So if it starts off in phase, it will end up in phase. Constructive interference over here. And so we get a maximum of intensity. So over here we have constructive interference. Now, as we move across this screen here, we're looking at light that's travelling at an angle away from the straight ahead direction, angle theta. So if we're looking at these two green lines, for example, that's showing the ray of light coming from the left edge and the right edge of the single slit. Now if that angle is theta there, then this angle here is also theta. And so the difference in path length, the difference in the distance travelled by this ray of light and this ray of light, is this distance here. So the path difference between those two is B sine theta. Very similar to the equation that I showed you for two slit interference. Just using a B for the width of the slit instead of a D for the distance from one slit to the next. Now, if that distance there corresponds to one whole wavelength of light, then that ray and that ray will be in phase with each other. Constructive interference, you might think. But, remember, we're not just dealing with those two rays of light, those two paths. We're also dealing with light that's coming from the whole width of the slit. So if we put the middle ray of light in here, if that one and that one are out by one whole wavelength, then this one, these two here, are out by half a wavelength, and therefore that and that, those two rays, will cancel each other out, exactly. And then we get another ray just above that one, and just above that one that will cancel out exactly, and then a little bit further up, and a bit further up, 
and so on. And these, this light, these waves, will all cancel out destructive interference in pairs, starting with those two, and moving up to the one just below that, just below that. So the whole width of the slit will cancel out. And in that direction, we get destructive interference. Now this pattern repeats, if we go a little bit further round, then we will get, the light rays will cancel out, but you'll get the whole pairing up, cancelling out, will finish a little bit before you reach the edge of the slit, if, we're, if theta's slightly larger. So we'll get a little bit here that doesn't interfere destructively, doesn't cancel out, and you'll get an increase again, up to a maximum value, and then down until this length here is two full wavelengths, in which case everything cancels out in pairs from there to there, and then again from there to there. So when this B sine theta equals an integer number of wavelengths, usually written This way, sine theta equals n lambda over b. That gives us destructive interference and will give us a minimum amplitude on the screen. Apart from n equals 0. When n equals 0, that's straight ahead. Theta equals zero. That's constructive. For any other integer value of n, destructive interference. So we end up with a pattern that looks a bit like this. We get a maximum here. Going down to a minimum value. There, when sine theta equals 1 lambda over b. and a second minimum there. And then an equal distance or an equal angle further around, another minimum. Now, the amplitude here, the amplitude here and here is going down in the ratio 1 to 1 third to 1 fifth to 1 seventh and so on. I'm not going to run through why that is at the moment and obviously it's symmetrical on the other side. Now the implication that this has is in things like astronomy, for example. No matter how perfect your equipment is, you cannot avoid this phenomenon, this situation. Because there, B, the slit width, is the size of your telescope. The actual aperture width. And that, basic physics, is limiting you to what you can see, what you can differentiate there, because the signal that you're looking at, the light you're looking at, will be spread out at least this far to 1 lambda over b, depending on what wavelength you're looking at, and that is why astronomers like to build bigger and bigger and bigger telescopes, because if b is bigger, then the spread of the signal, sine theta, so the angle theta, gets smaller, obviously, because we're dividing by b. Other situations where this applies are things like sound waves. If you are emitting sound waves from a loudspeaker, that also acts like waves going through a gap of width b, where b is the width or diameter of your loudspeaker. So the sound waves will spread out according to this pattern. And that's also why when you're, if you're, uh, if you're playing music or playing sounds with a, of a lower pitch, so lambda, the wavelength is larger. You need a bigger speaker in order to 
get the same kind of spread effect. So, this single state diffraction, this applies to all sorts of waves and keeps coming back up in all sorts of different situations. Well, I hope you found that interesting. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment box on the website or contact me if you have any questions about this that you would like me to clarify further. Thank you for watching.